How do you plan a manufacturing system based on certain predefined goals? Let's say you have certain criteria given from customers and based on that criteria you have to design and simulate the whole system. Today we are exactly going to do that. So I'm going to show an example of a tire assembly and warehousing system that was capable to handle certain number of tires and is capable to supply a certain number of tires to a downstream without any disruption. Before you start to design anything it's always important to understand the required goals. We'll start with the layout and production goals first in this example and then see what is designed and simulated and later we'll also see the statistics part of it. Okay, let's have a look at the production goals first. The product that we have at hand is tires. So we have three materials of tires that we need to work with and then we have five different sizes represented in different rims or color variants. So in total we are looking at about 15 products. Now the production goals are the customer needs a setup that is capable of handling all these tires in the batches of four. Then the downstream assembly requires that the tire plant can supply 720 tires per hour. Regardless of how many tires are produced and stored, the main point is that the supply to the downstream should always be smooth. Then the last thing is important to understand here is that we are working with the batches of four. So 720 tires per hour mean that the goal is to supply three tires per minute. Based on the production goals, we also have some layout goals that we need to work with. Let's go through them one by one. So the first one is there must be enough buffer to recover from possible machine downtime. The second goal that we have is there must be enough warehousing capability to store tires for five hours of production. That means that 900 sets in five hours should always be available at all times. And we need to ensure that any downtime that happens inside this system does not interrupt with the downstream supply. The last goal in addition to storage is of course we need enough conveyor capabilities to handle this many amount of tires. Okay, so let's have an overview of the simulation that we've designed. First, we have the raw material. These are the tire types fed to the robot cell. Uh, the robot cell has four assembly lines in there and we also have different rims that are basically the different product variants coming from uh, the other direction that is from behind the robot cells. The tires are lubricated, assembled, fixed and balanced in the cell and once they are ready they are sent forward to the warehousing side. Now we have large conveyor system that transports all these amount of tires to the warehousing and in warehousing we have different sections but we also have four different Cartesian robots that are picking, sorting, organizing and palletizing these tires. Once the pallets are ready they are picked by forklifts where they are stored before they are sent to downstream assembly. Now let's take a closer look at the layout that we've designed and see different sections of it. First, you see the tires here uh, they are, that are fed as batch of four to the robot cell. So here we see different materials coming through the feeder and then they are going to the robot cell. Here we see another batch of four being transported into the robot cell. Next, we have different rims coming into the cell which represent different sizes of the tires. So they are very randomly uh, distributed to the robot cells over here. Each of these conveyors doesn't have specific rims assigned to them. So they are randomly distributed and then we've got the robot cell with four assembly lines now each of these lines have Yaskawa HB20 RT robot on top of a smart pedestal with a tire tool that helps to pick the tire type lubricate it and assemble it with the rim here the tires are going through different set of machines where they are fixed and balanced before they are ready to be stored in the warehouse so here you see another tire being balanced almost ready to be transported towards the warehousing side now uh, the tires are ready so so here we see complex warehousing system but before that we also have some uh, conveyor systems that are transporting these different tires to uh, warehouses. Now the warehouse have different sections in it and each of the section is transporting certain uh, product variant in. So all the sections have one product variant transported in there. Let's first start with looking at the Cartesian robots. So the first robot, the red one here, so is sorting the tires by sizes. So here we see that the incoming tires are being picked up from the conveyor and the robot stacks them on top of each other and separates all these variants right there. So here the sorting is being done. Then comes the second Cartesian robot, that is the dark gray one. So the second Cartesian robot picks one set or stack of tires at a time. So here we see that the second robot is in operation right now. Here it moves and picks up one stack of tires 
then it drops it onto the conveyor system where they are being stored. So this robot kind of organizes all the different uh, product variants and then sends them into their own storage location. Here we see the third Cartesian robot, the steel blue with uh, beige pillars in here. Now this one is sorting the sets by their sizes in the storage location and then also supplying the sets forward when needed. So now here we see on the right side a conveyor which brings the stack of tires in into this storage section and on the left side we have a conveyor that transports the stack of tires out of this storage section. So here it picks it up one stack and stores it in this in this section. Now we are looking at only one section but we have these robots in each of storage sections and in each of these sections this robot is doing exactly the same work picks up the stack and stores it in their location now we see the fourth robot in front of us now this is the steel blue one here comes the fourth robot that is actually closer to the warehousing entrance this robot picks up the stacks of tires and places them in the tire rack now here we see some of the racks already being placed and once all the slots are filled with stacks of tires and from this last storage the tires are then supplied to downstream assembly as they are needed. We saw how the system was designed and we saw the simulation of the whole system. Now it's important to see if our system is capable to handle a certain amount of tires that were presented in the layout and production goals. So here we have in front of us some data that we've collected from four assembly lines. We call this scenario scenario one. So based on this scenario, the statistics show us that the output is about 31 tires per 10 minutes per line. This means that in an hour we are producing 744 tires, whereas the required is 780 tires per hour. I would say it's not really a bad result considering that our production output is quite close to the required output and also we could consider this option as uh, one of the final designs but before we do that let's have a look at some other scenarios now we have a second scenario that we need to have a look at so in this scenario we have five assembly lines so what we did was we had four assembly line system but we also built a five assembly line system same as four assembly lines just to check the output and the different in the simulation studies. So in this scenario, our output is about 28 tires per 10 minutes per line. So that means that we are producing about 840 tires per hour, which is way higher than required 780 tires per hour. So it could be said that this is a pretty safe option and this could be the final design for us. What about maintenance and machine breakdowns? One of the important things that we missed out on was maintenance times and mean time between failures. That is important to take into consideration when you're designing and simulating a plant of this level. So what we did was we added the maintenance time to all of the tire machines and this was on average 150 seconds and the maintenance cycle was uh, repeating every 30 tires so basically after every 30 tires were produced the machine was stopped for maintenance for about 150 seconds Right, so we have the third scenario in front of us that is basically a variant of the first scenario. So four assembly lines, but now we have taken the mean time between failure values into consideration. So once we took the maintenance times into account, we saw that the output of the four assembly lines was reduced to 29 tires per 10 minutes per line. That meant that we were producing 696 tires per hour, whereas the required was 780. So our, our production rate dropped from 7 44 to 696 that is how much difference we started to get after the maintenance times were taken into account not to forget that you in the in the data here that you see some peaks and dips and that basically represents uh, whenever there's a peak it represents the machine is in operation but whenever there's a dip it kind of shows that machine was in maintenance so there is quite a difference when these uh, maintenance and breakdowns are taken into account with scenario 3 now let's have a look at scenario 4 and let's see what's di what difference we see in there when looking at the output of scenario 4 which was uh, 5 assembly line with maintenance we are producing about 26 tires per 10 minutes per line which is just about the same as the required goal that is 780 tires per hour so it's safe to say that this is the most efficient design that we have now let's talk about the results and conclusions of this case so we were able to design a system that was capable to handle batches of four tires in all the product variant. So we were good there. There definitely was enough buffer to recover from possible machine downtimes. 
The production rate of tire assembly setup is not constant since there's always a maintenance cycle that has to be repeated. But since we've got the buffers and storage capacity, these uh, breakdowns doesn't really interrupt with the supply for the downstream. That's all for today. I hope you saw the value of uh, simulation for planning different systems. And with this case, it was clear that simulation should always be run with enough detail so your results are correct. If you are interested to use visual components for your own use, case uh, get in touch with us through the link in the description together we'll try to find a plan for you that fits best to your needs that's all for now goodbye